to be sharing with you a secret. A secret to unveil your own superpower. But before that, let me talk a little bit about myself. I am a 90s kid. In our time, our parents used to take the decision of which school to send us very simply. What they'll do? they look left, they look right. And the first school in the 500 meter radius was the school that we were sent to. Not like your parents who are like, let's research for the best international standard school and send our kids to some far away corner in Coimbatore. Let them have a problem. No, no, no. Our parents, pretty simple. Left, right, school. And so, I went to a decent enough school. In our school, we had a unique reservation system. No, no, not set by the school, but Sadio se chalti aarethi. I don't know if you have it right now, huh? So the first two benches of the class were reserved for the scholars. They were the studious kids. They were the ones who cared about their grade. They were the ones who actually cared about what comes after that point. You know where that one student goes, I scored 90%. The other one will be like, I scored 90.5. So the first two benches were for them. Now the last two benches were for the notorious students, the mischief makers. Their only objective was to date to I will throw one paper ball on another classmate and then be sent out of class and feel good about myself. Now the middle benches, they were for what I call the average students. Let me safely call them the, the middle class of the classroom system. And I myself am the mascot of the average kid. We would not score too good marks, but we would not be that bad also. I was so average. I was so average that even my marks asked me, do I have your permission to go beyond 80%? And I would be like, no. So in SSC, I scored 79 point something. Look, I don't have a problem with being average. I myself being one of them. But when it interferes with something that you are extraordinary at, that's when it becomes a problem. Take me for example. I was good at sports. But I would not come first. I would not come third. I would be second. Now fast forward five more years, I was tired of hiding. So I was like, bus ho gaya. Now I'll become a rebel. You know, I was one of those rebellious teenagers who make their parents repent. Why did they have a second child? Me. I was a kid who was called to dinner on the dinner table, be like, please join us for dinner. And I'd be like, no. So I did everything. I rebelled, I screamed for attention, but yet I was not feeling good about myself. I was not feeling extraordinary. Nothing changed in my life. Fast forward five more years. Total breakdown. I had quit the job for which I had studied for five years. Because it was complete disillusionment with everything that I thought that the job had meant. Also, I had horrible relationships. Because I did not know who I was in those relationships. Depression at that time was not available to the middle class. But if it was, I would pretty much be there. Then a spider bit me and I became superwoman. No, it doesn't happen like that. We all know that if we want to change our life, we have to do something about it. And it was at that time that I saw a presentation. I still remember that presentation began with three questions. Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to serve your country? Are you confused and you do not know where to start? My answer to all of those three questions was a big yes. And that's when I knew that I am walking this path. Now this presentation was for a course called Yuvavir course. I did that course. In the course we studied. We studied about who we are, what are we good at, what is possible and what can we achieve? And that got me thinking, got me started. Is this really possible? 
after my study, I was placed in CORD. CORD, as many of you may be aware, stands for Chinmaya Organization for Rural Development. We have many centers and I was placed in the Himachal Pradesh Center. There, I saw this superpower for, at work for the first time. Humble people from simple backgrounds doing extraordinary work. Transforming lives, persevering despite everything. And that really surprised me. I started questioning, what is it that they have that gives them access to this power? I wish I could say that in my nine months at God, I figured it all out, but I didn't. All I knew was that I wanted to dedicate my life to serving a cause and to helping people. So I came back to Mumbai and I started a not-for-profit organization. NGO, along with another friend of mine who was as naively passionate about social change as I was. When we started approximately 12 years ago in India, girls' education was not prioritized. There were challenges around female feticide, domestic violence. Conversations around menstrual hygiene was a taboo and all the economic power within the community was with a man. So we decided that we are going to help women impacted by poverty to help them start earning within their community. So we started doing everything from training to orders to raw material, rent support, infrastructure, everything basically we that we needed to do to help these women earn. Let me tell you, the work was very, very, very hard. Especially as two young girls who started this organization, we were either not taken seriously or we were looked at with skepticism, with doubt. See, NGOs at that time were more well known for money laundering and everything problematic then for social work. And so we were looked at with skepticism. What is their real intention? When we started, we put in all the money that we had in starting up the NGO. And we did not take in any salary for a good two to three years. When we ran out of money, we went to friends and family. We participated in competitions. We collected money from everywhere and we put it back in the NGO. But we were drying up real fast. Good work needed to be backed by resources and we were learning it. And so at that time, we said, let's focus on doing more good work. People will see the good work that we're doing and we will, they will come forward to support. But it didn't happen like that. If you're doing good work, you need to market it. And we learned it the hard way. So we hit rock bottom. Both my partner and I, we both started asking each other, Kyun kar rahe? If you want to do good work, go join another NGO. You can go there and do good work. And it was at that time that we remembered our women. One who said that she felt respected because she earned. One who sent her daughters to school. One who even combated domestic violence. And that's when we knew that we had to persist not for us, but for them. And that's when I discovered the secret to our superpower. By superpower, I'm not meaning the ability to jump buildings or turn green or even be thunder god. But boy, wouldn't we all love to have such power just for the fun of it? By superpower, what I mean is that when your talents are used for the betterment of the world, you become more courageous, you become more brave, you become more persistent. In short, you become a superhero. Let me repeat that. Your talents, what you are good at, when used for the betterment of the world, for others, you become a superhero. Fast forward 10 more years, I stand in front of you with some achievements. The NGO that I work for has raised in totality about 8 CRN funding, worked with 55,000 women impacted by poverty across India, 
We've also won some awards in recognition for our work. We've been featured in leading newspapers and magazines. But let me talk about some case studies. We create super DDs. Okay, now super DDs are women in the community who bring about a change. One such super DD herself trained 6,000 other people. She started a for-profit, a not-for-profit. She also exhibited her own products for sale in countries like Dubai and Mauritius. She sent both her kids to good schools and they're both working in resp respectable jobs at IT firms. A center in rural Maharashtra that is in food manufacturing unit employs 355 women. It's connected with 180 local buyers. Rural women working has changed the perception of what it is to be a working woman and also given aftercare support to their children. We also work in Kashmir, especially districts that are more prone to insurgency. There we trained 80 women, started two units and are also training super didis now. If I were to tell all of this to the 12 year old me, what do you think my reaction would be? Chal hat pagli. Let me come back to the formula. T plus O is equal to S. S stands for superpower. T stands for your own talent. Talent is simply something that you are so good at. You perceive you are so much that people start thinking you are gifted. It has two components to it. Something that you like to do and something that you are good at. Okay? So, think. What is it that you like to do? If you don't know, become aware. Take an aptitude test. Basically, do something. Next part is, what is it that you are good at? Some of you may even tell me, I'm not good at anything. No problem. You're at school. Learn. Be good at it. Many people have this problem. I'm talented at too many things. I don't know what to do. No problem. There are many paths to the same destination, right? There are different routes that you can take to reach the same place. Start somewhere. The real question is, what is the path that is easily available to you? Start there. Then later on, even if it's not okay, it's okay, change. But basically start somewhere. O stands for others. It basically means start working for a cause that is bigger than yourself. There is this joy that comes from working and doing something that you like. So there is a component of it being of joy to you. Then when you start giving the focus to others, what is it that they want? That's when your superpower gets unleashed. It can be any cause. You work for your family, your community, your country, environment, animals, any cause. No, everybody does not need to start an NGO. That's not what I mean. All I am trying to say is your passion. When you use it to help others, it becomes your purpose. Say you are good at singing. When you start singing to spread the deeper messages of life or bring joy to other people, that becomes your purpose. Take me for example. I used my skills in production to help women. It became my purpose. Now let me tell you why this is so, so, so very important. First, borrowed confidence. See, when you take on bigger challenges, you're going to feel afraid, fear, stress, anxiety. At that time, you can borrow the confidence of your cause. Saying, if I'm doing this for a larger cause, people will support me, God will support me. Two, it gives you the passion to fight. Say any girl over here, I'll tell you, you are a girl, you can't do it. How much passion it will give you just to prove me wrong. And that passion actually is what gives you the ability to be brave. Three, it gives you a vision for the future. 
एंड विजन इज अनस्टॉपेबल एनर्जी इट गिवस यू एक्साइटमेंट अरे ये होने वाला है यू वॉन्ट इट यू आर एक्साइटेड टू गो फॉर अ पार्टी डू योर पेरेंट्स डेयर स्टॉप यू वॉट विल हैपन इफ दे स्टॉप यू दैट काइंड ऑफ एक्साइटमेंट इज वॉट गेट्स थिंग्स डन एंड लास्टली इट यूनाइट्स अस इट ब्रिंग्स पीपल टूगेदर एवरीबडी इज सर्चिंग फॉर समथिंग मीनिंगफुल इन देयर लाइफ एंड वेन दे कम टूगेदर is what is when we can move mountains even the superheroes had to become avengers to defeat thanos and win the infinity war so i'd like to conclude by saying use your talent to benefit others and see your superpowers unleash themselves this is me ending with the intention that may we all come into our superpowers may we all unite and fight the inner infinity war against our darkness together thank you